Hi everyone, I'm Joanna Penn from thecreativepen.com and today I'm here with Monica Lionel. Hi Monica. Hi, how's it going? Oh, it's good. It's great to have you on the show. Yeah. So just a little introduction. Monica is the author of New Adult and Fantasy Fiction, as well as the Growth Hacking for Storytellers series of non-fiction books. And these include Write Better Faster and also Dictate Your Book, which is what we're talking about today. So Monica, just start by telling us a bit more about you and how you got into writing. Sure. So I started writing in about 2009, and that's also when I started uh, my self-publishing journey. So I actually started with nonfiction, similar to you, actually, where I had a nonfiction book, and it came out, and it, you know, it kind of flopped, and it was it was difficult back then to do uh, self-publishing. So um, over the years, I was still working full time, and I um, my background is well. I started as a software engineer, and then I switched to marketing. So I was still working full time, so that kind of slowed me down as well. And then um, the last couple of years, I started doing freelance copywriting. So that gave me, you know, that kind of got me back into the writing stuff. And then it's just in the past year or so that I've been doing it full time. So pretty exciting. Uh, it's it's a great time to be a writer, really. <laughs> it is, and I know you're in the in the happy tribe of people who are yeah. <laughs> loving this this world. Yes, absolutely. But um, today, I mean, there's so much we could talk about, but specifically dictation, because I was just saying to you before we started recording, it's going nuts right now. It seems yeah. like there's this uh, massive resurgence in dictation. Of course, <laughs> it's nothing new. So <laughs> let's start by sort of why do you think everyone is so hot for dictation? right now and why should people consider it? I mean I think that so I started using it in about 2012 um, for my wrists and it, it has been around for a while it's been around much much longer than that but I think a lot of things are happening one is that the technology is getting much better I also think that this message of um, essentially like writing like increasing your writing speed that has gained a lot of popularity this year and I know that um, the, when I wrote the book Write Better Faster the reason I wrote it is because all my freelancing friends they were like oh yeah I write like 3,000 4,000 words per hour and I had wanted to learn how to do that but that was a message that authors hadn't really you know caught on to or it just hadn't been like introduced to the indie author community or even really like the traditional publishing community either mm. so I think that's a big part of it is that you know there's a lot of people talking about increasing your writing speed now and there's you know the software is getting great um, a lot more people are into podcasting mm. so I think it's just a mix of a number of trends that have kind of converged at this point and now, you know, indie authors are just really seeing that they need to write faster to, you know, kind of maintain their catalog and keep their fans happy and all that stuff. Mm. And it's it's just a bunch of trends yeah, converging. Coming together. And, yeah. well, and for me, like that health thing, like I had RSI pain earlier yeah. this year and I I switched mouse to my, I'm right-handed, but I use my mouse on my left hand. That helps a lot. But then yeah. um, Terry Pratchett died, who is, um, I, know. I know, like wonderful so guy. So sad. So sad, but, um, early onset Alzheimer's. And I remember a couple of years yeah. ago when he lost his ability to write and he yeah. moved to Dick dictation um, and he used a person um, you know yeah. being super famous and rich so he could afford to like sit right. there with a person doing everything but at that point I I remember thinking I want to make sure if I get sick or like you know if I get really bad RSI that I can't I don't lose my living like right so it I think you, you talk about it in this in the book like building in redundancy so mm -hmm. that when you need this you're not struggling from kind of scratch yeah. so I, I and also I feel like it from a health perspective you know like you said if we're writing four plus books a year four to six to more potentially a year you, you're gonna kill yourself unless mm -hmm. you're walking or doing something so the, these are really good reasons so um, let's I mean I've got lots of questions for you but let's just start I mean the first thing people think is what technical gear do I need? And you mentioned the technology's got a lot better. So what's your setup for software, mic, all that type of thing? You can try this out for free. So if you're sitting at home right now and you want to try dictation, you can you can try it out for free. I know there's a number of apps that do it for free. There's also Mac has a dictation software that's built in and you can just use your built in microphone. Mm. But if you're ready to, you know, if you know that you like doing it, 
Um, the the software that I have, I have Dragon Dictate for Mac, um, and that that's so Nuance is the the company that does that software, and that's really the industry standard right now, um, as far as I know. So there's that. There's Dragon Natural speaking for uh, the Windows users. And then what I have is I have a podcasting mic, and that has helped me significantly. It's just improved the accuracy that I've had over the built-in microphone. So my um, my microphone, it was only, it's probably like a hundred bucks um, for the investment, but it was, it's the AT2020 um, from Audio-Technica, and it's a very popular podcasting mic, kind of low-end pop podcasting mic that's i'm sure what, that's you what i have <laughs> oh is it oh, okay great and so I it's bought, also yeah it's i bought a different one anyone. and it didn't work so this one this uh -huh. one is great i love it yeah perfect yeah yeah i love it too i know the yeti um is also a very popular one so i mean you can look for podcasting mic recommendations but that's what i would recommend mm -hmm. and that's that's really it other than that you can get some accessories for your microphone and you know that sort of stuff but you know that should get you started pretty pretty yeah. well so basically the, the technology isn't a barrier to entry and i found that i mean i have the setup i'm a podcaster yeah. you know i should have no reason <laughs> to not do this and so for me it was uh getting dragon and the training your dragon thing and i have tried <laughs> and failed twice now like i have gone i'm gonna do this this time it's gonna happen and then i have just been driven nuts by training the dragon thing so um what are your tips for uh people who are less than patient <laughs> <laughs> well so i guess i guess i would have to dig in a bit more but um one thing that definitely it took me a, a while to figure out is that dragon thinks very differently than we do so we think in words right we're thinking this cat did blah 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 um, Dragon thinks in phrases, and so once I kind of caught on to that insight, that really helped me significantly because um, it's it's really this idea, and they have this in the training a bit too, where you think about what you're going to say, and then you say it, and you speak it with confidence. Um, that piece is really it's really thinking in phrases. Um, and when you do that, the punctuation gets a lot easier too. So that that's one thing where when I talk to people. They're very like one once they hear that sometimes it helps helps things click for them. Not everybody, of course. I mean, everybody has different reasons, right? So I, I'd love to hear what um, what you feel you're struggling with with it. Well, I think what you've said there, the thinking phrases, I think is is great, and also the um, thinking before speaking. Well, I think for me, it might be more of a psychological block in mm. that, and I don't I hate use the word block. Let's not use block. Let's use psychological <laughs> issue where. I've, I guess I've convinced myself over the years that I think by writing and by writing, I mean typing or yeah. by writing with my hand. So I, I feel, and it's ridiculous because of course you just have to retrain yourself to think and then speak. I'm speaking now. It's not that hard, but <laughs> it's almost like when I write a book, what comes out on the page, I didn't even almost feel it in my head you I mean you write fiction you understand sure. but so how did you change your brain to go from typing uh to thinking and then speaking yeah I think it's it's difficult because a lot so I'm also more comfortable writing of course um and I've always been that way but I think what has I think one thing is that your process for writing might change. Like that's, mm. that's one thing that I tell people is that, you know, when you're typing, you have the opportunity to edit yourself mm. much easier. Even if you're not editing on the screen, a lot of times you're still editing in your head almost. Um, and I don't know if you, you know, maybe that's what you're kind of um, mm. alluding to where you, you know, you're, you're thinking and then you're kind of like editing it in your head and then you type it out or you edit it as you're typing because mm. you can type all, you're going to, you're typing a lot slower. So what it does with dictation is you really, you can't edit is like, you just can't edit <laughs> while you're writing. And that is, that's a, like a, it's a huge like rewiring um, for your brain. So it does, you know, it is a matter of, you know, maybe you have to change the way you're writing to do the dictation, or maybe dictation will change the way you write. It's kind of like not what people want to hear, but I know for me when I when I started, so I had to start doing a lot more beats. Mm. Um, 
and having more fleshed out beats so that I could kind of like get my writing slash editing done in the beats or like you know like make those make those decisions because all of editing is just making different decisions right like we're, mm. we're trying to figure out what we want to do so with my beats sometimes I'll do that by typing and then when I when I'm dictating I'm I've kind of made a lot of the decisions already so I'm not in that editing mode <laughs> yeah so that well that comes to the the point of what do you need to do to prepare your book before you start dictating so yeah. and and some people might not know what beats are so maybe just oh, sure. talk about that from a fiction and a non-fiction standpoint sure so beats to me beats I, I don't know I'm sure people have better definitions than me but to me beats are just it's just a deeper outline so you know if you're um like if you're writing a chapter you might and you're doing an outline you might have a couple of sentences or maybe even a paragraph about that chapter so beats would be fleshing that out much more and you know coming up with like three to five paragraphs about your chapter or ten paragraphs depending on how long it is but it's just it's fleshing it out more and for me things that I include in my beats for fiction are descriptions because I don't I always forget to put descriptions in so I like give myself a note like write a description about this person or you know so it it's really like getting more detailed in my opinion I'm sure other people have other ways of doing it but um, yeah like and I'll also mark like the conversations that need to happen between people and it's really it's just more detailed for me um, for nonfiction what I do I I don't do as many beats I'll typically do um, I think because I was I did a lot of copywriting I'll typically do like headers so in dictate your book for example the first chapter is like it's like essentially nine reasons that you should try dictation or I mean it's you know something like that so what I did is I just had each header and then um, when I was dictating it I just you know dictated like a paragraph or two to expand on that mm. yeah I think nonfiction is in a way easier especially like me where I have a whole load of PowerPoint slide decks and things from from talks and I've, I have dictated the first draft of something, but it's almost like I didn't dictate it. I spoke it. And then the editing of that was a nightmare because I was doing like, like the editing of this podcast is a nightmare because you end up <laughs> saying words like, 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 and sure. you know, um, and things. So when you're, so that to me is like the next step because conversational speaking is not dictating sentences yeah. for a book even for nonfiction it's really not so have you I mean and maybe that's also changing the way you think and dictate but do you find you have to do a whole lot more in the edits or have you really shifted the work into the beats rather than the edits um, I think it's a mixture of both because dictation right now the software out of the box is probably about 95 percent or so accurate and I have tried training it up and in my opinion it's just worthless like I don't I don't think it's worth training it up I'm hoping that in five years the software just get you know increases accuracy and it has um, over the years as well mm -hmm. so again I started in 2012 um, so I would say there's a little bit in the post edits but for me the ums and likes uh, like I, I guess I don't think of dictation as a conversation mm -hmm. so that's kind of um, you know, like, I mean, because you're absolutely right, and that's a huge insight, is that it's really not a conversation. It's not a conversation you're having with yourself. It's more like a presentation you're mm. giving to somebody. So you want to be somewhat polished in the way you're speaking as you do it. Um, unfortunately, that's, that's challenging. The good thing is that you have as many pauses as you want. Mm. So... Um, you know, normally when we're doing a conversation, we fill in those pauses. Yes. It's really, it's really like you get, you get to take as many pauses as you want. So I guess that's how I think of it. Like when I started out, one thing I did is I would stand in the room by myself and I would stand up, um, and I would, you know, pace around the room as if I were giving a speech to somebody about even, even with fiction, like about my book or whatever it was. Um, and that, that did help a lot. Mm. Yeah, well, no, that that sounds right. And you, the pausing, uh, of course, with Dragon, the cursor just stops, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or yeah, if you were using a recorder, you just press pause. 
Yeah, yeah. So that's the key is to stop, think, and then speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so before a dictation session, uh, people should have some kind of outline, preferably a detailed outline to speak from. Sure. Um, and they should have spent some time training the dragon if they're going to use dragon software. Is there anything else they should do before the session? Well, it depends. I guess if you're so if you're just doing it at your desk, then I would say no. If you're trying to like dictate on a walk or something, to me that's like a whole different topic. While you're just sitting there <laughs> and then take it on the road, but um, I've definitely talked to some people. Like one guy that I talked to, he got his dictation software and he was like, "I'm gonna go dictate in my car to train the dragon." <laughs> like while I'm driving, I'm like. Really? Like, this is, you're just going too fast here. So I would say, you know, take it step by step. Um, yeah, if you're going out on the road, there is a technology barrier. And I mean, for you, you're very, you're very well versed in like audio files and all that stuff because you're a podcaster. But for some other writers, you know, if you haven't done podcasting or audio production of any sort, you're going to want to learn a little bit about that as well. Um, because what you would do is you're going to take your setup on the road, you're going to record your audio file, then you're going to have to bring it back and get it transcribed and all of that stuff. So that's something else to think about. Um, I mean, no, I guess other than that, it's really, it is, you know, prepping your, prepping your work so that it works with your dictation style and then just, you know, go ahead and do your dictation. Mm. Yeah, so on that uh, walk and talk, as you call it, um, so I'm, uh, I decided to set a fitness goal for, for next year because, you know, yeah. I'm sitting down too much. So I'm doing this ultra marathon walk thing, 100 kilometers in uh, 36 hours. So I have to do a lot of walking to train for that. Yeah. So, you know, five, six hours a day type of thing. Yeah. And so I was thinking, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm with this why I need to dictate. I haven't got time to write separately. <laughs> um, so, I mean... The other thing is I heard about the dictation. So Kevin J. Anderson uh, does this. He actually just walks with a, a, a normal recorder and, okay. and pays for transcription. So mm. I'm almost thinking, and I know that's more expensive, but the big difference for me is the, the, the speech marks, the... Um, uh, oh, like comma? Yeah. Like comma, question mark. Yeah, yeah, comma, open quote, close quote. To me, that almost just takes me out of the story when I'm sure. speaking. So do you think there could be a middle ground where you sort of start learning to tell a story out loud and then later add in the the, the kind of the speech stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pun I, sorry, I, punctuation in general. Cause sure. It's, yeah. Yeah, I do. I definitely think that. And I mean, it does cost more. So but if you know, if you're if you have the budget for it, then that's like to me, that's great. Like mm. I would love I'd love to have someone transcribe my stuff rather than <laughs> the software. Um, yeah, I would say, you know, I think with dictation, um, that approach is actually a great idea because I do think that there are lots of different skill sets that have mm. to come together to make it work. Right. Like you have to you know, you have to get the technology side right. You have to get your writing, you know, you have to make it work with your writing process. Um, and that that may mean a change in your writing process, mm. you know, so you have to get used to that. Then you also have to learn all the dictation commands, which is, you know, that also can be a bit confusing and stressful. So I do think there's a lot of different skills that have to um, converge. And I think learning those, you know, one at a time is a great strategy. Mm. So how long did it take you uh, to kind of, you know, d learn the commands, you know, train the dragon, change your process? Yeah. Uh, you know, how, how long <laughs> did that take you? Yeah. Oh, gosh, I don't know. Um, so I would say, well, so one thing I did is I started with my freelance work. Um, I didn't start with fiction because it was it was just really a challenge. So I started with my freelance work, and because I had been doing that for so many years, I had a pretty good, you know, I had a pretty good writing process for that that worked a lot better than fiction did, basically. And then with fiction, I, I had to learn how to do my beats and get that, you know, get that working for me. Um, I had to do that, so that took, I don't know, like maybe another couple weeks or another month. Um, and then doing my walk and talk setup, that took me like probably two months to get correct. 
um, because that was it was just like I was buying like different pieces to like cobble it together and it was a challenge you know it was it was hard um, figuring out like even a path to walk that was you know, you kind of want a path that's like quiet, yeah. but you don't want it to be like dead. You don't want it to be in a bad neighborhood. So there's <laughs> there are like so many factors in it. Um, I lost like the other thing is you have to learn how to um, do your audio files and like, you know, kind of record on the go. And that was a challenge. I know I lost a couple of audio files, like 20, you know, 20 to 30 minutes long. So that's no. that's like a whole chapter. <laughs> yeah. So I would have to like re-record that. I mean, I still have my beats, but I, you know, I'd have mm. to like re-record it or something. I mean, I'd say, I'd say, I don't know, like several months really to pick up all those different skills. Yes. Okay. So now people are going, ah, I don't <laughs> want to have anything to yeah. do with that. But, <laughs> sure. But how has it benefited you? So, so tell us like, what is, what do you, what is your writing speed now? Like how many words do you get in an hour and has it actually sped up your creation process? Yeah, I would say it has sped up my creation process. So, um, so 2013 is when I really dug into it. So I had done, I had done dictation for about a year already. 2013 was when I was like really digging into it and I was going to optimize everything. And during that time I did hit speeds of over 4,000 words per hour. Not every time I want to be clear. That's not like, okay, let's do the math 4,000 words. Because people are like, ooh, um, you know, it's like when someone's like, oh yeah, I earned twenty thousand dollars in a month doing this, and people are like, oh my gosh, calculating it out. Yeah. Um, so four four thousand words was a max for me. Um, there were definitely sessions that were like twenty five hundred words or mm. whatever it might be per hour. Um, yeah, I would say now. So the the thing for me now is that I don't use dictation for every little thing. I use dictation when I want to and when I need to write fast. So there are some situations where I want to enjoy what I'm writing mm. or I want to, you know, I want to dig into this character or whatever it might be. So I think that most people who start, they're very excited about the word counts and they can get lots of word count. And that is really exciting that you can write a book in, you know, a month or so. Um, but it's, you know, after that, I still, I still do, still do a lot of typing. Mm. Um, and it, it's really like, it's just, you know, it's just another skill set, in my opinion. Mm. Um, if I'm doing dictation, I probably get between 3,000 to 3,500 on average per hour. Um, mm. So it's so it's a pretty good skill set to have. But again, you know, a lot of people feel like, oh, if I do dictation, I, you know, but I like typing. But it's like, you don't have to give up your keyboard. Like, you still get to keep that, you know? <laughs> this is just, like, another thing you can do. So if you're, like, on a deadline or something and you're just, like, I really just need to get, you know, 10,000 words today, it's, like, you can pump that out in a couple hours, so. Yeah, well, and that's what I find. The reason I still want to do this, you know, is that the the I did a recording of, you know, for one of my books, and I got 6,000 words in an hour. Yeah. And yeah. I was just like, whoa. And I, <laughs> and I normally get around 1,500 typing. Oh, wow. So it was like, oh, okay, this is crazy. Yeah. You know, and that was nonfiction presenting with a PowerPoint slide deck, you know. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, okay, I've got to, I've got to do this. This is, a, like you say, it's a skill set. But it's mm -hmm. also going back to the health thing. I think we do need to walk more. We do need to right. move more. And if you are not on a on a treadmill desk, I think Russell Blake is on a treadmill desk, right? <laughs> but, um, yeah. you know, I have a small flat, you know, I'm sure you right. do too. Can't, yeah. it, it's just not practical. <laughs> and also I want to be outside. Like I I think part of me just wants to do this like Kevin J Anderson again like again I come back to him because he hikes I think like five or six hours every day and he's super fit like being a super fit author how many of those are there <laughs> yeah that would be amazing yeah um yeah so in Chicago so again we just moved um to mm. St. Louis so in Chicago it was really hard to find a good walking path mm. but here I'm I, you know again because we just moved but I have to figure out like what's a good walking yeah. path or but yeah, I, I totally agree. I think the, you know, it's it's the health benefits mm -hmm. are kind of, they're a huge reason for me at least. And I know, you know, a lot of other authors could benefit from that as well. So yeah, so just so after dictation, obviously, we're really just talking about first draft, aren't we? You still have to yeah. go through all the editing process. 
entirely Absolutely. separately. Yeah, I would not do editing with uh, <laughs> dictation just because it's just not quite there yet. And there, you you have to love the commands. Like mm-hmm. if you're gonna do it, you have to you have to know the commands, love the commands. For me, like a lot of people um, probably don't realize this about me, but I'm I don't really know a ton of dictation commands, um, and I never did uh, any dictation drills to learn them or anything like that. I pretty much just well, there is one thing I have. I know one. Well, it's like a it's like a two part rule. Um, basically, it's if you are doing punctuation, you can just say it. So like ellipsis is a punctuation or like comma or period. Those are all punctuations. And you can guess at those. Yeah. Like it's not trying to trick you. It's like it's literally like the name of it. So it's like semicolon is yeah. the man for that. Um, so that's that. But if you are trying to apply formatting, so like bold or um, like spelling or... I don't know, deletion or anything, any sort of formatting, like editing type of thing, that is, the command is always like delete that or spell that or Mm. um, bold that or point, bullet point that. Because that's another, that's one that was hard. Like normally we put the bullet point first and then we say the thing. Um, With dictation, you have to say your thing and then bullet it. Rules that I remember to kind of just to get myself through a lot of the dictation sessions and get, you know, get the right formatting or the right thing done. Got done, yeah. yeah. No, that's really cool. Well, um, yeah, I mean, is there anything else on dictation that, that people should know before we talk about some other uh, tips? Yeah, I mean, there's so many little things, oh, but oh, I it's just thought of one. I just thought yeah, of go one ahead. because you write fantasy, <laughs> and I know other people like if you're writing fantasy, yeah. you don't use whatever names are right. You do a mapping. Yeah. And you just use like Tom and Bill, and then you change it all later. Right. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah, that is a really good point. So um, with names and locations, Dragon just does not learn them. <laughs> like it, it's like you're gonna pull your hair out if you have to try to teach Dragon these names. So yeah, I would say like top 100 baby names are perfect, mm. um, and you can just you can just codify essentially. So like I have a character named Bryken, and his uh, his name in my book is Ryan, and then I just go through and um, do like a replace all, mm. and it's a quick it's a quick tidy up, but it's still you know it is an annoyance, and there are those little annoyances with using it that you you kind of have to accept or you decide not to use it. Mm. Um, and, you know, my my thing was I was, you know, the word count is just too good to, you know, kind of uh, reject it just yeah. based on that. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah. But I would say um, for, you know, again, it's only about 95 percent accurate. So for most people, you're going to have to do a replace all on just little annoyances like that. So like the names and locations, but everybody has like other other little annoyances that it you know, Dragon just picks up something wrong and it's different for everybody. So you just have to kind of keep track of that and do your Yeah, replacement. Yeah, and just, yeah, just to kind of live with it. There's all these little things, but then I guess we, we kind of forget the little things that we had to learn when we learned to type, you know. That's true, and, yeah. Or, or learn how to podcast. You know, people say, well, how do you do a podcast now? And I'm like, well, it's easy. And then I'm like, well, actually, it's not easy when you start thinking yeah. about all the things you have to do to do exactly. a podcast. So, and self-publishing. I mean, all of these things involve upskilling. And then yep. once you know how to do it, you wonder how anyone else struggles. <laughs> right, exactly, yeah. <laughs> You're like, why can't you do this? And I feel like that now. I feel like I'm at this, just just got to do it, just got to. Yeah. And then in a year's time, I can talk to you and go, you know, yeah, what's the issue? Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. And I'll be like, 10 books a year, you know, it'll be amazing. <laughs> um, but, but one of your, dictation is just one of your secret weapons, right? So the book before Dictate right. Your Book was Write Better Faster. And mm-hmm. A very popular book, you know, every, you know, yeah. everyone really into this. Um, you know, what are some of the other ways that you have speeded up your writing? Yeah, um, I think definitely with the beats. So knowing what you're going to write before you write it, I think that's really something that Rachel Aaron, that mm. like she was the first person yeah. who kind of brought that message to the world and um, or to the indie community. Uh, and her book is called uh, 2K, 2K to 10K. 2K to 10K, yeah. yeah. Okay, so that was kind of the premise of her book. So I think that's a big one still. And it's something um, I know, uh, like Sterling and Stone, for example, they have their new app story shot that's coming out, which is the same premise, right? But I think it's like write stories faster or something mm-hmm. is their tagline. But 
it's the same premise of you have to know what you're going to write before you write it. And that's going to make you faster, whether you're typing or dictating. Mm. Um, the other thing that helped me was the Pomodoro method. Mm. And what that is, it's 25 minutes of focused effort and then a five minute break. And you kind of just repeat that cycle. Um, that that's been huge. Um, and I think that's something that people can test like right away. And for me, that doubled my writing just like right out the gate with typing or, you know, no special tricks or anything that really just even doubled my word count, um, in the same amount of time. So that's one. And if, um, one thing, so in my book, the eight minute writing habit, what I talk about is for a lot of people that Pomodoro session is too long. Mm -hmm. So like the 25 minutes, you can't squeeze it in in the morning, you know, without waking up a half hour earlier. Um, so I talked about the eight minute, you know, an eight minute session of that, which is essentially the same thing. It's just, you mm -hmm. know, you only do eight minutes. Um, you can keep that, you can keep those sessions short. You could go down to five minutes, which I think is something that Chris Fox um, mm -hmm. talks about in his book as well. Um, but you can go down much shorter and it's still, you're still going to get those uh, word count jumps. Mm. I think so yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, and I think that uh, make the, the timed writing, like how, whatever it is, any kind of timed writing. I started with write or die, you know, back in, yeah. I think, 2009 or whatever it was, you know, yeah. write, write or die dot com, this software that count, you know, counts and it, it gives you a, a hooray when you, yeah. you know, <laughs> and it starts deleting your stuff if you stop typing. And oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's oh got my a, gosh. a kamikaze <laughs> mode, which is really Ooh. cool. Yeah, it's really good. Um, so I think any any of that kind of timed stuff is really good and it stops you procrastinating basically yeah it? it's yeah exactly that's, it's that's all about point. it's all about focus and flow is really what it is writers should use is if you're on a deadline especially if you're just writing for fun then take your time no, and do we're whatever the indie community. <laughs> yeah <laughs> we gotta charge ahead right we gotta get <laughs> well, and also i think that it, well you know joking aside it is important to set your own deadlines i think when people sure. email me and say oh i've been writing the same book for like five years the reason why is because they haven't set their own deadline yeah. So <laughs> yeah, we, exactly. You know, when you don't have a publisher, you have to set it yourself, don't you? So yeah, basically. Absolutely. And um, so you you've gone full time author entrepreneur. So and you're in year one, you said? Um, yeah, I, I started 20. So I'm in like year one and a half, I guess, because okay. I started um, May 2014. Fantastic. So. so what what have you learned uh, going full time that you you could share? Because I know that first year is pretty tough. Yeah, I, I think that for me, because I started, I mean, I started in 2009, but I was distracted for like many, many years. Um, the biggest thing for me is that I got mentors. So, um, and you, you're, you know, you're good friends with the guys at Sterling and Stone, but they, you know, they've been my mentors and they've just helped me tremendously. Um, and a big, the way that they became my mentors is because I went to their world building summit. So that yes. was I kind of like, I mean, it, it, you, you know, you the ticket was access. You exactly. Paid for access. I, yeah. I paid for access. Yeah. And, and all the people that went, um, they like most of them now work with mm. Sterling and Stone as well. So mm. it really, I mean, it really is sad. And the one thing I would say about that is a lot of people are like, well, you know, maybe you have money, but I don't or whatever it might be. Like I took all my freelance savings, like everything I had, every like little less penny and put it towards that world building summit ticket so yeah and it was it was you know it was a higher priced event um so you know it's it's all about if that's if that's your dream you gotta go you gotta yeah. go do it but um yeah mentors has been a big thing i'm really impressed with that monica and i say that you know i did that too i paid for yeah if there were people who I could learn from I paid for their courses I because yeah. and and the thing is the more you know you you have to if you, you can't jump that you couldn't just go to Sean or Johnny and say hey just mentor me you know I get emails every day as well like sure. oh, and it's like you that's just impossible and but what you did was great and it was exactly the right thing and the, obviously the reason you're on this show is because you you know I heard of you first through them and you know oh, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it kind of spins these things happen so so well done you and what you did was stick your head up uh, and yeah. say, notice me, which yeah, exactly. you, you have to do, don't you? you do. Yeah, you have to force people to notice you and also respect their time. Yes, I mean, because it's it. like, hmm. yeah, like I bought their ticket. I'm not just trying to freeload off yes, of them. Exactly. So I think that's that's a big one. And really just getting a mentor is just, 
Mm-hmm. Like you need one. I mean, some people do very well on their own. For me, I I would not be where I am without mm. their help and without. Well, I, I, I would have. add that you know I I've never had a uh, live mentor, as in uh, I've I've yeah. paid for a lot of courses and read a lot of books. So sure. I, I yeah. count you Absolutely. know people like Stephen Pressfield would be a mentor because I reread his work over mm. and over and over again. Yeah. Um, and, and that can that can be a kind of digital mentor as well. Can't yeah, it? yeah, yeah, absolutely. I have yeah. so many um, like I think books are the best way to get a mentor without mm. taking up their time, really. So, yeah, yeah. I'm to- I'm on the same page. I buy a lot of books from people as well. So. Yeah, exactly. We all devour so many books. Um, yeah. yeah. So and I was going to also ask you, uh, you know, you're a young young person, <laughs> young person on the show. Um, and I wondered what you see, like you, so you chose self-publishing, right? Right out the gate. You, yeah. you didn't even yeah. go anywhere near traditional. What, what were your reasons for that? Well, I wanted to, I think because I, I am not really, I'm not a great employee to be honest. And I, I mean, like that, that's kind of hard to say, but it's true. Like I'm, I am an entrepreneur, so I think that's why authorpreneurship appeals to me so much. Mm-hmm. Um, I do like to be in control, and I like, you know, there's a lot of upside. Like if you can do well at this, there's a huge upside, and mm-hmm. um, that that's not as strong in traditional publishing. So that's that's one thing, which is not to say I'll never do traditional publishing. Um, that's certainly, you know, potentially part of the plan as well, but. Um, yeah, I just feel like I can do a lot on my own first. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I guess that's that's really my motivation for yeah. it. I, I just wondered, you know, is, do you feel that there's a shift amongst uh, the more millennial kind of generation towards entrepreneurship away from big corporate type of thing? Is that, is, or is that just your personality? Well, I think it's it's certainly not for everybody, but I do think that it's just the fact that there's the opportunity is, you know, is available to a lot of young people and young people don't have as many commitments. So, you know, for me, for example, um, I am married, but I don't have children. So, you know, and I'm in I'm in my very early 30s and, you know, so but someone even younger than me, they have so much opportunity to do this. Like they don't have all these commitments that, um, that, you know, that are going to hold them back. Being able to do freelancing for a while without having to worry about supporting a huge household. Like most, most people in their adult, you know, as they're adults, they can't necessarily do that because they have a family or they have a house or whatever it might be. So being able to take those risks, I think is a big part of it. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, that said, you know, there are lots of people who are doing very well that were able, I think, I think when you're older, you have less like things that are holding you back. Like you're, you're able to focus a lot more. So I see a lot of people older than me, they're able to, you know, they're able to break through the, any barriers like very quickly because they've already, they've done like they've done a lot of jobs or they've done a lot of work on themselves or they have a family, you know, so there's like both sides of it in my opinion. Mm, And life is short, you know, the older you get, you're like, what am I doing with my time? Like I need to get out and and, like make a difference. And of course I've had Lily on a heart on recently and between her and her husband, I have five children. So I mean, certainly in the, it doesn't really matter. I think it's more of a, it's more of an attitude. Like, you know, it's mm. a can do attitude. It's a learning attitude uh, right. that, that you have. And I, I mean, what do you think uh, about the future of publishing? Like what's going to happen in the next couple of years that you're excited about, for example? Well, I think a lot of, I think a lot of stuff is going to go to video. So I am excited about that. Not in, I think that authors are not going to be just authors, I guess I should say, mm. because storytelling it's, it's moving to, I mean, it's always been in other mediums, but there's a lot of um, cross media, I guess, or cross pollination there. So that's what I'm excited about. I'm definitely excited about a uh, web series. Um, I, w- I would love to do something, you know, I would love to do something like that. I think television as well as getting, um, it's, it's uh, there's just a lot more opportunity there than there used to be because it's really so, it's like split up a lot more, over channels and it's fragmented. Thank you. (laughs) I was like, (laughs) what is that word? Um, Yeah, but television is becoming more fragmented. So I think there's a lot of opportunity there as well um, for all of us really uh, Mm. for to either get our books, you know, put into television or 
whatever or web series or whatever it might be um and also to write in those arenas so mm. that's something that i'm excited about and i see that path i think also audiobooks um you know obviously with podcasting audiobooks have become more popular and there's a ton of opportunity there so yeah just just all the different opportunities um that are available yeah so and and with video you do you mean television you don't mean the author doing a bit more video well it seems like I don't I don't think authors are the best at doing video <laughs> no, <not> now. <laughs> like as a community, I, there are a lot of great uh, YouTubers within the author community, but as a community, we're not really as geared toward that, I feel. <laughs> just but, introverts, like back yeah, away. <laughs> yeah, we're just not as excited about being the star almost. Um, because author, you know, being an author, it's a profession where you don't have to be in front of people like music, you you really have to like want to be a star. Um, but yeah, I think the opportunity to write television or to write web series or to write, you know, things that are on that are produced independently and then put on YouTube or whatever it might be. I think there's a lot of opportunity there. Mm. No, super. I'm, I'm excited about all that too. In fact, yeah. I'm, I'm so excited about everything. It's really hard to know what I to know. spend time on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm really, I'm like all scattered. So for me, I'm like, I really got to focus on my books right now because otherwise I'd be like, ooh, podcast, oh, YouTube channel. Like I'd be all yes. over the place. I, and I, it's so funny, and I've said this before on the show, but I have created quite a, a bit like Sean and Johnny in a way I've created a broad base of a um, you know they've yeah. done it with their books I've done it with my platform like I have a YouTube channel I have a podcast so you know I do have Twitter I have Facebook I have a blog I, and then it's like if I'd have just concentrated on one thing it would have <laughs> it would have you know got a lot bigger a lot faster so that's a, yeah. good, a good tip to everyone and of course uh, you know given that you're full-time your main concern I presume is getting your regular monthly income sorted yeah, yeah, I'm still definitely in that phase where um, where I'm looking to hit certain numbers mm. every month. But I think in probably six months to a year, I'll be out of that phase, which, mm. you know, most authors, they do grow out of that where it's like, okay, my income's pretty like steady now, yes. or it's growing or whatever it might be. And I have plenty to support my bills. Mm. Um, and now I can do you know, now I can take more risks, or I can invest more in my business, or I can do you know, I can do the series that I want to do as opposed mm. to, you know, the things, not that, not that you're ever writing something that you don't want to be writing, but you know, you do like your passion project that you know is not going to make as much money here. Mm. So yeah, I'm definitely still in that first phase where I am full time, but it's, you know, it's like, it's not like a huge full time income. It's just yeah. like a like it's right there enough yeah. to give up your job and I that's why I exactly. said about year one year <laughs> one you kind of have enough that you want to give up your job because you know that if you spend more time on it that's the only way you're gonna do the jump so yeah you know I you know I know but what's great is that you have that certainty and the reason you have that certainty is because of the people that you've seen do it before right yeah yeah uh, yeah a big thing um definitely for my certainty it's really watching other people and like having their playbook or like knowing knowing what they did and just you know they're there to encourage you and mm. yeah it's definitely it's definitely like I I mean and that's a that's a funny question because I do think that authors in general they don't really know the playbook so if you wanted to be a doctor you know exactly how to do that like it's definitely a lot of hard work and you can see that up front mm. but there is a clear-cut path the same is true for being an author but I think a lot of that is still behind closed doors in many ways and not yeah. purposely but just because people who have done it they don't realize that there's like 90% of the other people like they don't know how to do it <laughs> so <Yeah>. it's like <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> yeah no and it's funny you say that because I just um I'm still being quite quiet about it but I, I released the creative freedom course which yeah. is everything that I know to do the right. whole thing and yet what what you realize like when I what I realized when I put it together was oh my goodness again like the dictation like the podcasting there are so many elements mm -hmm. to doing this as a business like you are you know it's different to doing it as a hobby so yeah. I think it's it's great for people to realize that and um just just so people know how many books do you have right now Oh, I always I always forget this number. I know it's over 20. Um, and I know this year. So this year, I have 17 planned. And then if I'm able and I have eight out already. 
um, or nine. I don't remember. <laughs> it's it's really hard to keep track of at this point. But yeah, it's it's in the 20, 25 yeah, range. So you were, hus- you were uh, hustling. I mean. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You're like, well, behind. yeah, yeah. The first five years, I was very, very slow. Um, I like I was at like one book a year or something. Uh, and because I was working and other stuff. Um, but last year I did eight, and then this year I've done eight already, so I I, I should hit impressive, more. <laughs> impressive. Yeah. I'm, I'm feeling like I'm slacking here. I'm like, okay, I need to, yeah. you know, man up and <laughs> yeah. do some yeah, dictation. Not, <laughs> right. So not all of mine are novels, though, like, yeah. just to be clear. Uh, yes, and some, some of them, them are, are quite short. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, it doesn't matter. It's another book. Yeah, um, it's, it's more product. Exactly. So uh, tell people where they can find you and all your books online. Okay. Um, I'm at prosonfire.com and that's my main blog, website, everything. Um, if you want to get on my email list, you can just sign up anywhere there. It's all, it all goes to the same email list. Um, and then uh, my Growth Hacking for Storyteller series is on Amazon and it is exclusive right now. Um, I don't know if that will change in the future, but if you have Kindle Unlimited, you can read all the books for free. And then uh, my fiction is everywhere. So, um, Go ahead and pick that up. And then uh, my my pen name fiction is also everywhere, but I don't... Don't talk uh, about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we talked about it. But um, yeah, so I write so uh, I write romance. Yeah, I write romance under a pen name. So. Fantastic. And peop- and are you open about the pen name? Is that is that on your well, website? Um, it's, I guess, yeah. Well, so my pen name is Maddie Raven. So if you want to go look it up. Um, but no, I don't, I guess I don't keep keep it on my website but that's where that's actually where I've been more focused the last several years so my current my fiction under Monica Leonel that's probably the stuff that I'm most passionate about but it's also the stuff that I've had a lot of false starts with Mm. um, in terms of developing an audience so the other stuff is a bit more established fantastic well thanks so much for your time Monica that was great yeah (laughs) thanks